Well, we're here on the Mount of Olives, east of the old city of Jerusalem. I'd like to give you just a little bit of orientation as to where you are, uh, as much as we can. Um, if you can find over to here to the left, to my left, um, you see a, a gray domed church with an arch on the front of it in the distance. Uh, that is the church of St. Peter at Gali Kantu, the church that was built to commemorate uh, where Jesus' trial was held and where Peter denied Jesus. Uh, just a little bit to the left of that, you see a valley, and that's the Hinnom Valley, mentioned several times in the Bible, also where we get uh, one of our words for hell, Gehenna. Uh, if you go back uh, past uh, the Gali Kantu church and continue to the right, uh, then a little bit up the hill, you see another church with uh, kind of a cream colored sides and and uh, kind of a blackish top and that's the Dormition Abbey uh, where Mary is supposedly buried. Uh, then you continue on a little bit more to the rod and you begin to see the southern wall of uh, the old city, what's now the old city. Uh, and you can kind of trace that wall on down toward us as well. All of that area right around there and, and to the a little bit further back and, and the, to the left is what today is considered to be Mount Zion. Uh, then if you come on down toward us a little bit more, kind of follow the wall down, and then you look a little bit to the left, you'll notice there's a little hill uh, just uh, kind of this, this side of Gali Kantu Church, and that's the city of David. The interesting thing about that is that that is the original Jerusalem. When David came in 2 Samuel 5 and he conquered Jebus, the Jebusites, uh, that's the whole city there. It's maybe two blocks by six blocks. And that's where he set up the tabernacle with the Ark of the Covenant there. He brought that in 2 Samuel 6. And that's how big Jerusalem was for years until his son Solomon expanded it a little bit and built the temple. Now if we come on up talking about the temple and we, we cross inside of the, the walls, or actually right around the, the southern wall here, you'll see some steps uh, that are, are pretty old. They're from the first century or even beyond. And those are what's called the southern steps that Herod the Great built as part of his expansion of the temple platform and the temple area. And those are the original steps that, for example, uh, perhaps Peter uh, spoke from in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. Right around that area is where the 3,000 would have been baptized uh, and where the church began. So a very important part as well. Then if you were to go up those steps and through the wall there with the gates and, and go on up uh, to the right, then you see what's the Temple Mount. And of course you see the famous Golden Dome, the, the Mosque of Omar. It was finished in 692 AD. Uh, and the, the, temple dome, the Temple Mount now is under the control of the Muslims. Uh, then if you look uh, beyond the, the Temple, the dome there on the Temple Mount, and you look kind of behind it, uh, more to the west, uh, you see two gray domes, one larger than the other, and that's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, the church that marks the spot of Jesus' death on the, on the cross at Calvary and also being buried about 50 meters away from where he is crucified. And so again, you see in this one line of sight uh, two of the major world religions <laughs> now at this time, and, and for us as Christians, of course, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre uh, is a very special place. Then if you uh, go track back to the Golden Dome and a little bit further right, uh, you see another part of the Temple Mount. Uh, it's perhaps uh, the Temple of Solomon uh, or the Temple of Jesus stood a little bit further north, uh, you know, to the right of the Golden Dome in their day. If you continue tracking, you'll see uh, a large kind of rectangular cream-colored building with the tower out of it. Uh, that is now a school, a Muslim school. But back in the time of Jesus, that's where the Antonia Fortress was. And that's probably where Jesus would have been tried before Pilate and scourged before he was sent out to be crucified. Uh, if you continue uh, looking a little bit more toward us from the, from the Antonia Fortress location, you see in the, old, in the wall of the old city, uh, the Eastern Gate. It's now blocked up, uh, but for centuries that was one of the main gates that people would enter the city. Uh, Jesus probably used that gate uh, many times as well. Below that gate, uh, you see a cemetery, all the white stones there. Uh, and then as you come on toward us, you see uh, the Kidron Valley that's mentioned in the Bible. Uh, and then if you continued on up the side of the Mount of Olives toward us, you would also see another cemetery. And this is like 
the prime real estate for being buried. <laughs> if you're a Jewish person, you want to be buried here. Uh, and people will come here to commemorate deaths of their family members for centuries past. And the idea is that uh, if the Messiah comes, he's going to come to this place, and they want to be right here where he's going to come to be able to greet him when he comes. That's the Jewish belief. Uh, for Christians, uh, some Christians believe that this will be the place of the Last Judgment. And so again, a place where you would want to be. And so right in this area, just a, an amazing amount of, of history, both past and potentially future history. Now if we continue on to our right, on down the Kidron Valley, more toward the north, uh, you'll see then uh, the Palm Sunday Road snaking down the middle. Beyond that, you'll see the beginnings of uh, the lower part of the Mount of Olives, the golden domes of the Mary Magdalene Church, a Russian Orthodox Church. And then you'll see a church kind of in the middle of some trees, a, a dome uh, that's shaped like a teardrop, and that's the Church of Dominus Flevit that we'll see more in detail in a, another video. Uh, and that's where uh, the Lord may have stopped to weep as he came into Jerusalem on that triumphal entry Sunday, uh, weeping for uh, the mistaken beliefs of the people and what he wishes they would have known and wishes they would have believed, uh, a moving spot. And then beyond that, further down, uh, the taller trees uh, mark the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, where Jesus spent the last uh, night of his life and prayed and then was arrested and led away to be crucified. Uh, so this is a, a wonderful place to stand and reflect on so much history uh, that has happened here and things that may still happen as well. Here we are standing on the Mount of Olives. In many ways, this is kind of the center of the Christian universe. If it's not, at least you can see them, all the significant sites from here. Uh, we're looking across the Kidron Valley into the city of Jerusalem, and there, of course, is the, the, the famous Golden Dome, the Dome of the Rock. And just beyond it, uh, the two gray domes, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where uh, church history and tradition says that the likely place that Jesus uh, was, was crucified at Golgotha, right there, and that he was buried in a nearby tomb. That's significant at standing here on the Mount of Olives because after Jesus' resurrection, we remember that he spent uh, about 40 days with his disciples uh, making appearances, a series of appearances uh, to his disciples and to others. And the end of that period, on the 40th day, was his ascension. And scripture says that that happened right here. Now we don't know where it happened. We're on a high place on the Mount of Olives and, and um, there are several high places on the Mount of Olives uh, that overlooks the city of Jerusalem. So somewhere along in here uh, is the place where Jesus gathered his, with his disciples and he gave them his final words and according to Acts chapter 1 uh, the disciples asked him about the coming of the kingdom and uh, Jesus gave them great assurance uh, that they had a mission in the world that they were to be his witnesses uh, in Jerusalem in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth uh, that they were to go back into the city. So in other words, they were to go back across the Kidron Valley into the city, uh, perhaps in and around the temple area at that time, and to wait for the power and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that Acts 2 experience that we read about and know so much about may well have happened right down there, at what we now call the southern steps, at the southern end of the Temple Mount. But after that, uh, Jesus made his ascension that he rose up into the heavens and that he went back to be with the Father. And uh, there's that memorable line from the angels. Why are you standing here looking up into the heavens, which probably anybody uh, would have been if you had seen something like that. But the disciples then went and did exactly what Jesus had told them to do. They went back into the city and at 10 days later at Pentecost, uh, the Spirit came upon them and the mission began into all the world. But that started right here at the Mount of Olives.